All right, so today we are going to make a cable and it's going to be very easy. Everybody can follow along and afterwards we are going to animate this cable using geometry nodes. So it's going to be very exciting. So let's delete all of this. I'm going to add a circle, but of course we don't want to have 32 vertices. So I'm going right over here. I'm going to change it to 16 because now it is a little bit easier to work with. Now what I'm going to do basically is simply select all of this, delete the vertices. Then I'm going to take those ones, press E and Y and bring them outwards. Now, right over here, I'm going to press Shift S, cursor to select it go over here object set origin to 3d cursor then i'm going into the modifier where i will add a mirror modifier which will have to be operated on not on the x but on the y and then it is making this shape now of course we have to change some of this area because it's not square enough you know the top side of this is pretty square and that's what we're going to recreate so i'm going to delete those vertices Turn it on on the X as well, because now we only have to work on this line and that is going to be very handy because all we have to do now is make sure that this line is going towards this corner because we've got this corner right over here and it's aligning quite well with this vector. So I'm going to zoom in real deep and what I'm going to do, so I'm going to press shift S, cursor to select it. Then I will take this vertice. Let's set this to 3D cursor and then I'm going to press S, shift Y, zero. And now it is exactly on this line, which is aligning with those vectors. Now I'm going to select this vertice, shift S, cursor to select it, and I will delete it because we've got our 3D cursor in the correct position position now and I will keep this on 3d cursor but I will select only this vertice because I want to scale it towards this 3d cursor so we have to turn on proportional editing once again and I'm going to scale this towards the 3d cursor until we've got something that looks a bit more let's say square and that is going to be this entire thing now of course this moved so we have to change this back to its original position and there's two options to do this we can either do the lazy way which is what I'm going to do press e and x bring it right over there and select clipping and now it should be solved and then I'm going to add a control to subdivision surface modifier and now we've got this exact shape now it should probably be a little bit thinner so something like this should probably do the trick and maybe what I even want to do is take all of this some more and uh, make sure it's a bit more square something like this and that's going to be the top part of our cable and what i'm going to do now is simply apply the mirror modifier don't apply the subdivision by the way only the mirror modifier now what have we got right over here if i select all of this and i go to the statistics which i, which I can enable right there i can see that we have 24 edges and basically what we want to do is make sure that they become 32 so i'm going to click on this Merge by distance, we remove two vertices, which are probably those ones right over there. So I'm going to take all of these lines right over here because I noticed that they are not centered enough. So I'm going to set it to individual origins, S, Y, zero, and remove proportional editing, S, Y, zero. And now that is completely straight, exactly like we wanted it to be. And of course we have 24 edges and what we can do is add some more. So let's add one right over there, right over there, right over there, right over there. And now we have 28. So basically what I want to do is add two more vertices right over here because those edges of those lines will align a little bit better. Add two more over there, two more over there and two more over here. And right now we have 32 vertices, which if you remember is the exact number that we can use in order to make a circle so this can fit right in there. The first thing that I'm going to do is simply bringing it upwards, E and Z, and make sure that we extrude this outwards like this. Select this bottom edge holding Alt, Shift S, cursor to select it. Now all we need to do is add a circle. So I'm going to press Shift A, add a circle. I'm going to leave it to 16 vertices and I'm going to scale this up as well. I'm going to press S and Y, scale this on the Y axis. Then I will select both of these, set this to proportional editing. So click on O and then I will scale this on the X axis and on the Y axis just a little bit, maybe to get this rounded off shape. And of course we now have 16 vertices. So we should right mouse click, subdivide it. Now we've got 32. I'm going to add those two together. So select them, select this one last, control J. And now both of them are added together. I will select this line, then I will select that line. I will right mouse click, go to loop tools and click on bridge. And as you can see without the subdivision service modifier, it should be bridged entirely correctly. And let's turn this on. All we have to do now is clean up this mesh a little bit, add a loop cut over there, add a loop cut over there. And that looks pretty smooth. Now let's select this entire line E and Z. Let's bring it down until it is something proportionally correct. Something like this is fine. So I'm going to select this line, control B and give it an edge bevel of three segments. And that looks pretty good. Shade auto smooth. That also looks pretty 
Good. Now all we need to do is go over here and add a grid fill. So type grid fill in your search menu. And if you're lucky, it will do it correctly at the first time. Otherwise, you will just have to play around with the offset and make sure that everything is working out for you. And if it is not, no problem. Simply click on F, I, and then you've got this and uh, just deal with it. Either way, I am going to use the grid fill because I like working in that fashion. I'm going to press I, press O to remove proportional editing. Let's bring this inside, scaling it. Then right over here, I actually want to turn this into a circle. So right mouse click, loop tools, circle. And boy, does this circle look bad. And the reason why it is not creating a nice circle is because we have to apply the skills. So control A, apply the skill, loop tools, circle. And now we actually have a circle. And of course, we can E this like so make sure that we have one of those parts right over there and this is going to be connected to the rest which we are going to make in geometry nodes now i'm going to select this entire edge Control b of course and i'm going to bring it over there with three segments and this one as well i'm going to just add an extra loop cut and right over here add an extra loop cut and that looks pretty jolly fine to me but i do believe that this mesh is a little bit messed up so i'm going to select all of that like this doesn't look entirely to my liking. So we're just going to remove it. We're going to use an age old trick that I learned from my forefathers who use Blender in a different age, a different time. And let's delete all of those nasty pieces right over there. Everything that looks weird should be removed from the face of the earth, including you. And now we can select this line and I'm going to use this age old trick. It is called press F and then it will be filled up and as a matter of fact, I'm simply going to bevel this using three segments and that looks pretty nice as well. So right here, we have got the basis of our entire USB thingy and let's do the top as well. So let's take this, let's search for grid fill. Let's press I, bring it inwards, press E, bring it inwards. And uh, all we have to do now is add a loop cut like this, select the inside of this. So with three, select all the faces, not two, with three, Alt E, extrude faces along normals. Let's bring it inside, something like this. And let's also select this inner edge then. Control B to bevel it and make sure it looks a bit nicer. Then select this and this and give it its own material. Plus right here, that's right guys, we've immediately transitioned over into creating materials. And now I'm going to select this line, this loop, this loop, and well, this loop as well. And I'm going to make a new texture, new assign. And I will call this metal and I will call that one cable inside. And then I will select this from the bottom. Then go over here, control plus, 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 plus. And I'm going to give this a new one, new. And I will call it cable assign. So let's go over into metal and let's increase the metallic, decrease the roughness. And uh, perhaps we could call it a day, but I like making things a little bit better. So go over to the shader editor, press on the noise texture, bring it in there, factor into the roughness. Let's bring in a color ramp as well. Let's make sure that it's not entirely rough and not entirely shiny. So something like this should probably do the trick, but I'm going to increase the detail and increase the roughness as well until we get a result that somewhat looks like this. And then for the inside, for the cable inside, I'm just simply going to make it a bit more red and a bit of a darker tone red. I'm going to increase the roughness as well. Yeah, something like that. I'm just simply going to keep it like this. Then for the cable, all we have to do is add another noise texture, you guessed it. And I'm going to plug the color into the base color, add a color ramp in between, increase the detail, increase the roughness, control T object into the factor. This is all real time guys. I hope I'm not confusing you, but this is pretty simple stuff. If you want to know more about this, watch my other tutorials. I go in depth with all of these things plenty of times. So I'm going to decrease the scale, set it to one, maybe even less, something like this, just to give it that extra vibe as if it's a bit more interesting than what we had before. Now let's increase the blackness to like a grayish tone. And this already seems a little bit more real. And then for the roughness, I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. And this is the way to make the cable. Now let's go over to the geometry node section. I'm going to to select this i'm going to press shift a curve bezier go to geometry nodes on the top here and i'm going to press on new now i'm going to want to be using this one group input and i want to plug it into an instance on points because i want to instance our cable which we just made because we didn't make it for nothing the circle right over here and the geometry to relative geometry into the instance and right now it is being instanced on our curve and the way that we can notice that is because if we are in the curve itself we can move the curve around 
let's see right over here you can see what the curve is doing but we have to change some settings so first of all i'm going to resample this curve i'm going to resample it based on its length right over there what i also want to do is make sure that on this curve which is only this part i'm going to drag this out to the right side okay so we are spawning quite a few of usb parts but that is not exactly what we want we only want one of them and it should be on the end point of our cable so what have we got to use we've got to use end point selection because end point selection allows us to boolean which is the pink little button right over here so it's going to say yes or no and i'm going to say yes only to the end so not on the beginning only on the end right here how do i know it's the end let's go over into edit mode select this little drawing tool draw it and there you have it it is located at the end of my drawing so we know for sure that it's on the end right now you can also place it on the beginning but it wouldn't make much sense so i'm going to delete this and i'm going to keep working with this curve now there's a couple of problems there are two things that we want to do we want to animate this curve which means that it should be let's see with the trim curve node trim curve right over here but as we do that and we play around with this this is a pretty boring curve. Let's add a better curve. I'm going to delete this one and let's draw a new one. One that's way cooler, like this. We do not have a curve as of yet. And that is a problem. So we have to make a curve before it is actually it's looking like a cable. So let's bring in a curve to mesh node. And soon you will notice a problem. Curve to mesh, let's add it in there. Uh, the endpoint selection doesn't work anymore. Now, why is that? I think it is because the endpoint selection is based on the curves and not on a mesh. And this is now a mesh, so it doesn't work anymore. Uh, we have to change that, but first let's finish this off. I'm going to add a curve circle, curve circle to the profile curve, doesn't do anything and we have to make a join geometry node right over here i'm going to plug the curve to mesh into the join geometry and now we can actually see the curve but we haven't retrieved our curve for any instance on points so i'm going to drag the trim curve and bring it right over there as you can see this is now what our curve looks like and we can even animate it with the trim curve node but there are a couple of problems as always one giant problem solving machine aren't we well let's move ahead and take the length of this and let's set this to approximately like four or five or whatever this is a pretty long line but i'm going to set it to four or five and we want to make sure that this cable is always in the direction that the curve is headed in so in this case it should be moving in that direction but i will show you that it is still okay so now it is moving in that direction uh, but on this side it definitely isn't because as you can see it is still moving upwards it's moving upwards and that looks very weird actually we want this part to be sticking on that part the entire time now the way to fix that is actually quite simple all we have to do is add a align rotation to vector it has changed its name align rotation to vector rotation into the rotation and then uh, simply wait until the computing is done i'm just kidding guys all we have to do is add a curve tangent but you will soon see that we run into another problem vector and look at this it is finally aligned with our curve and it doesn't matter where we are on the curve it is working out but as you can see right here evil things are plotting against us it is moving in a weird fashion it's bah, it's going like that like an old printer we don't want that we actually want it to be smooth throughout the entire process so the way that we can do it is simply by adding a store named value right before the trim curve store named value I'm going to set it to a vector because it should go in all directions and then I'm going to take the trim curve, the curve tangent, and I will plug it into the value and I will call this Tang, you know, from Wu-Tang Clan or curve tangent. And I'm going to bring in a named attribute and I will call it Tang. Bring it in there, it will automatically change to a vector, which is very nice. Vector into the vector and now it should be, let's move away to this point, it should be the case that it's way smoother, but still we haven't solved this problem. And the reason why this happens is actually quite simple. It's because we made a mistake earlier on. It should be on original instead of relative. And now it should be on the correct position the entire time. So if we move this around, it's starting to look like this. Now, if you get some jaggedness right over here, you can always increase or decrease the amount of length that we have right here. So let's see what this looks like, for example, approximately four meters. And this will now be a smooth line. So let's have a look at this. We have to give this a uh, material. So set material node. And I only want to give this curve to mesh material. And it should be the 
cable material as well. Let's see what it looks like. Very beautiful looking cable right there. Of course, I do believe that this part is either a little bit small for this area or this area is a bit too tall. So I'm going to take all of this. Let's select it. Control plus, control plus, control plus until we've got that entire area. Um, then I'm going to press S shift Z because I don't want to change how tall it is. I simply want to change the X and the Y location, something like that. And now we have a wonderful looking cable. Let's draw on this. Let's uh, do a couple like this and maybe on the other side and maybe one of them will be moving towards us. And now you can infinitely animate cables in whatever fashion you would like. There you go. Now we are going to use this in the next tutorial but no problem I'm going to guide you through every step of the process and we are going to make this animation. So if you like this video click on subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. I get the money and it's right on cue. Keep the duffel bag up inside my coop. Hold a couple racks tell them I love you. You want to be a boss do it like I do. Uh.